All right. Good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to welcome you to Automotive Linux Summit and Open Source uh, Summit Japan. Uh, this is our first in-person event, can you believe it, since July 2019 uh, in Japan. And so, really, I'm really happy to, see, to be here, and I'm really happy to see all of you here. And let's hope we have a really good event this week. I'm sure we will. Uh, I also want to uh, echo what Nori said. I want to thank all of our sponsors. Uh, without their support, this event would not be possible. So thank you very much to our sponsors. And also, I would like to thank the AGL Advisory Board um, for approving the sponsorship of AGL uh, Diamond uh, sponsorship for this event. So thank you very much to the AGL Advisory Board. Uh, Hanu, thank you. So COVID-19 um, was a very challenging time for the whole world. Um, the automotive industry specifically was, you know, impacted quite heavily, especially in the beginning with production lines that were shut down because of COVID, with supply chain problems, with chip shortages, electronics shortages, and so on. So it was a very challenging time, there's no doubt. But I'm glad to report that despite all of these challenges, AGL is thriving. We've added more members, we've added more code, we've added more features than ever before during the last three years. Part of, that, uh, part of the reason for that is because we've always worked as a remote organization. So not meeting in person had absolutely zero impact on us. Uh, all of the people that work on AGL work remotely, they work from home, they're developers from all over the world. Uh, some of them work for companies, but they're, you know, they are remote. So this was not affecting us at all. However, on a personal note, I had supply chain problems and my hairdresser could not find scissors. <laughs> and so I went almost two years without a haircut and, uh, and uh, this is the progression of my hair during COVID. <laughs> and uh, the picture on the, uh, the left here, people say I look like uh, Beethoven. So I think, <laughs> I think it's true, but okay. <laughs> okay, so all jokes aside, um, I just want to recap because some people may be new to AGL and not uh, realize our goals. So I want to recap the goals of AGL. So AGL was created to build a single software platform for the entire automotive industry. So Linux was doing well in automotive. It was being adopted by many different vendors. But the problem is that vendor A, vendor B, vendor C, they all had their own flavor of Linux, different versions, different hardware support. So it was a big mess, big fragmentation. So AGL was created to really unify everyone on a single platform. And AGL was not created to put companies out of business or to put tier ones out of business. It, it, absolutely to the contrary. The goal of AGL is to have 70 to 80% of the starting point of a production, produ production project. So what that means is that all of the bits that are not uh, important you know, they're, they're commodity bits. They're things that everyone needs. You know, like, you know, a networking stack. Everyone needs that. You know, everyone needs the kernel. Everyone needs the, you know, audio. Those are not things that differentiate your product. So this is why AGL was created, to build that, that stack. And then on top, the tier ones, the OEMs, can add 20 to 30, 40%, whatever the number is, of their own look and feel, their own design, and make the platform their own. Uh, at AGL, we've uh, always uh, said that we're addressing all the software in the vehicle, specifically in the cockpit. Uh, we've focused on infotainment, instrument cluster, heads-up display, telematics. Uh, we're also working on functional safety in collaboration with the ELISA project. And we have, uh, although we are not personally focusing on ADAS uh, at this point, we have a lot of member companies that have actually uh, started using AGL for ADAS applications. And so they're using the base AGL and adding ADAS applications and using it as a standardized OS in that fashion. During COVID, I'm proud to report that we had really good growth of membership. Uh, we are already at over 150 companies, so the fact that we're adding more companies is, is quite a testament. Uh, Ford, Amazon AWS, SoftBank, uh, these are not small companies, uh, so we're, we're glad to see them join during the difficult times. But we also had Morelli, Red Hat, Yazaki, AVL. These are tier ones and, and tier two software providers, ISVs, and so on. So we're really happy to see the growth 
uh, despite the challenging times of COVID. Overall, AGL has 11 car manufacturers that are supporting the project. Um, we have very good geographical diversity. Ford from the US, Honda, Mazda, Mitsubishi Motors, Suzuki, Toyota from Japan, Hyundai from South Korea, Mercedes-Benz and Volkswagen uh, from Germany, and finally SAIC from China. So very good uh, geography and uh, geographical uh, diversity. And if you count all the vehicles that these companies produce, it's roughly 50 to 60% of all the cars in the world. And so AGL is here to stay. <laughs> when I mention Volkswagen, I want to highlight that we mean Volkswagen Group. So this includes all of the Volkswagen brands and logos, including uh, Audi, Porsche, Scania, Skoda, etc. cetera. Um, and we hope to see uh, AGL in uh, one of these uh, luxury vehicles like Bugatti and Lamborghini in the future. Uh, also during COVID, we added Amazon AWS as a platinum member. So thank you very much for, uh, for, to Amazon, if you're here today, to, for joining us. Uh, Amazon is leading the container and service mesh, mesh expert group, which I'm going to talk about later in the presentation. Uh, but they're also collaborating in several areas around vehicle to cloud, IoT protocols, over-the-air upgrades, uh, et cetera. And so welcome to AWS. As I mentioned, overall, we have over 150 members now supporting the project. Um, in addition to the OEMs, which are obviously the most important, uh, we also have most of the big tier ones uh, that are part of the project. We also have most of the semiconductor companies that are uh, suppliers to automotive. Uh, but overall, the growth has been more in companies that want to join AGL to be part of the ecosystem for connected car and cloud because all of the traditional car companies, the tier ones, the semiconductors and the OEMs uh, have been part of AGL for several years. The growth is coming from more of the connected car and cloud type of, of companies. This chart was released just a few weeks ago by uh, IHS Market. Uh, they are one of the leading analyst firms, uh, technology analyst firms, specifically they uh, follow the automotive market they published this slide, on, uh, this slide on automotive OS market share. And I'm really proud to report that AGL appears to be uh, doing well and will, will, is expected to be the market leader for several years to come. Uh, I want to point out that the top line, um, there's a pointer. <laughs> I want to point out that the top line here, the gray, uh, is actually an Android fork. So these are companies that take Android bring it into their own company, create a fork, and then they have to manage the software by themselves. There's no Google support. So I don't really consider that an actual platform because each company has their own. Uh, this is mostly used in China. So if you take the gray out of the equation, we clearly show that AGL is expected to be the market leader. Uh, the green is Android Automotive, which is supported by Google. And then the blue is Linux. Uh, meaning non-AGL Linux. So as you can see, we're expecting Linux to go down, AGL to go up. This makes sense because a lot of companies that had adopted, um, a, or had adopted Linux are now transitioning to AGL as their preferred platform. So we're going to see that trend continue over the next few years. In terms of uh, releases, um, if you're new to AGL, we name our releases after Fish. Uh, the, uh, the, the software is called UCB, which stands for Unified Codebase. Um, and the idea behind the name is to show the industry that our goal is really to consolidate everyone on one platform. And we have quite an aquarium <laughs> at this point. Uh, my colleague, Walt Miner, is the one that comes up with the names. And we name everything after fish. And uh, you can see, uh, you know, AABB, et cetera, these, these are... Uh, the releases, but the point is not to show you fish. The point of this chart is to show you that we do two releases every year, typically one in the summer time frame and one in the early part of the year time frame. Uh, more or less, we tend to follow a tick-tock model, so the one that is the beginning of the year tends to have more features because we target that for CES and, and give some demos. And then the one in the middle of the year tends to have more um, hardening and more focus on 
uh, uh, making, making it like a, a good candidate for production projects. The latest release is Nifty Needlefish. Uh, and not to go through all the different features, but one of the highlights is that um, Nifty Needlefish is now based on Yocto long-term support 4.0, which is called Kirkstone. Why is that important? Well, it makes it a very good candidate if you're planning to do a production project um, this is a good candidate because it will have Yocto long-term support underneath uh, AGL. The next one after this is Optimistic Octopus. Uh, difficult to say, but <laughs> uh, this will come out uh, in Q1 2023. Please check our, uh, our uh, schedule on our website. Uh, expected time frame is February. In fact, here's the roadmap. So you can see the roadmap on our website. Okay, let me change gears and uh, see that's a good automotive uh, <laughs> uh, sentence. Let's change gears. I want to talk about some of the software trends that are coming up in 2023 and beyond. So one of the software trends you're going to see is um, a lot of companies have announced OSs. Volkswagen.OS, you know, Mercedes-Benz OS, you know. I, a lot of people get confused by this because they think, oh my God, they're inventing a new operating system. But they're not. I'm a computer scientist, you know, I studied electrical engineering, and for me, when I hear the term operating system, I actually think of Linux and QNX and VXWorks, right? But the executives at these companies are kind of using the term operating system to mean service delivery platform. They're not actually inventing a new operating system. What they're doing is using AGL and Linux and the best of open source packages, and they're building on top of that to create a platform that allows them to deliver, deliver services to the consumer, which is the person buying the car. Um, so AGL is perfectly positioned for this trend because most of these companies that have announced this kind of strategy are actually AGL supporters, or they're using AGL, or they're using tier ones that use AGL. So we've been perfectly positioned for this trend. This is not something that is new, it's just that the marketing has kind of changed and you see a lot of hype around it in the media. Another trend is that SOCs are becoming extremely powerful, multi-core processors, uh, really advanced graphics capabilities, uh, things that we couldn't do five, six years ago, seven years ago, you know, these are becoming really powerful. So there's a desire to utilize that power by consolidating the software in the cockpit. And so AGL, we've been showing this, we've been uh, doing demos of this concept for over five, six years now at different trade shows and so on. The idea is to use virtualization and run instrument cluster, infotainment, heads up display side by side on the same processor. And we have a virtualization expert group that uh, is being led by Panasonic that is working on this and helping us with this. And this is something that AGL is extremely well positioned for. In fact, I would say we're kind of leaders in this area because we can actually run instrument cluster based on AGL with Android based on Google Android in the same vehicle over our virtualized environment. And so this really is something that Google can't do. And so we're kind of a step ahead in that area. Um, another trend is that automotive software complexity is growing dramatically. And there's a need for updates, security patches, et cetera. Just as an example, the AGL infotainment system has 111 million lines of code. That does not include comments and blank lines. The instrument cluster has 83 million lines of code, which is considered slim. <laughs> uh, my point is the software is becoming very complex. And how is AGL addressing this? Well, Amazon AWS has helped us by starting a new um, expert group called Container and Service Mesh. And really, the idea is to simplify the deployment of software in the vehicle. Think of it as treating the vehicle a little bit like a server and using containers and standardized environments to be able to push software updates in a standardized way. Also, to be able to use IT, uh, existing tools, and IT expertise, meaning you don't need an embedded engineer to do this type of work anymore. So it opens up a whole new market in terms of engineers that are uh, IT experts being able to do car stuff. And so this whole concept is a bit forward thinking, no doubt. We're not there yet because the car 
is still an embedded device, but this is a, you know, a step in the right direction in terms of uh, solving the complexity of software deployment. Another trend is that all of the last three things I've talked about, really, it's, lines are blurring between embedded, IT, cloud, and, you know, th th this is becoming, uh, you know, a complex area. Uh, if the car is to be like a mobile phone, which essentially is what consumers want, they want the car to be as easy to use and as easy to update as a mobile phone, well, the software is going to become more and more complex. And so AGL, we're addressing this with the three expert groups I've already talked about, vehicle to cloud, container and service mesh, and virtualization. All three, I think, amount to what I like to call the cloudification of the vehicle, which is eventually we're going to treat the vehicle more like a server and the ability to push software updates to it will be much more simple than it is today. And another trend, or I should say trendy, uh, is that uh, the term software-defined vehicles, there's been a lot of hype around this. And the, the term is new, and you'll see a lot of press talk about it and organizations talk about it. It's, it's valid, but I just want to say AGL has been doing this for over eight years. In fact, the chart on the right, which I showed you earlier, was produced in 2015. And so at AGL, we've always thought that um, the vehicle is defined by software and that all of the cockpit functions are basically defined by software. And so this is not new to us, and I just want to say that we're really in the middle of this software-defined vehicle trend. <clears throat> I want to highlight a few more key developments. Uh, at AGL, we have a reference hardware uh, expert group. Um, we're building our own hardware and making it available uh, for purchase to the AGL community. Why are we doing this? Because it's very difficult to get automotive-specific hardware. Uh, today, we have Renesas R-Car-based SOC. Uh, in Q1, we're planning to add a Qualcomm SOC option as well. So if you're a developer and you need hardware for your desk, um, these are options that you can purchase, uh, and you can visit the Confluence page at the bottom to see how to purchase. Uh, in terms of other development options, uh, we're adding, Amazon AWS is uh, helping us in, to add uh, AWS Graviton support. This is an ARM64-based architecture environment that is based in the cloud, and imagine an engineer working at home uh, remotely and doing some application development, doing some testing on AGL without the need for physical hardware. So this is yet another option that we're adding for the AGL community. Uh, this is a huge uh, development, Flutter. So Flutter is an app development framework. And Flutter uh, is an open source project. Uh, Toyota took Flutter and uh, modified it to be more specific to the vehicle and more specific to the embedded environments. And they contributed all of that code back to AGL. So I want to thank Toyota for that. That's a great uh, contribution. Uh, and what this really means is that AGL uh, will be very competitive with Android in terms of ease of application and UI development. And so stay tuned for this. We're already, we've already ported the AGL demo apps to the Flutter environment, and we'll do some more during the year, the coming year. Uh, but this is a very important development for AGL as it really makes us competitive to Android in app development. Uh, virtualization is a, another very important development within AGL. I'm not gonna talk about this because Ms. Yamasan of Panasonic will give a talk later this morning, and he's gonna cover a lot of this stuff. Very quickly, in terms of events, uh, we will be at CES. This will be our first uh, time back at CES since 2020. Um, we are in the uh, vehicle technology area. You can see we're going to be around uh, Hyundai, Daimler, Hyundai, Toyota, Amazon Automotive, uh, right in the middle of the automotive sector. So if you're at CES this year, please come see us. We'd, we'd be happy to host you in our booth. Uh, this was the booth in 2020. So we're going to have a couple of vehicles, and it's going to look very similar. And we will have about seven companies doing demos uh, inside the booth, uh, showing AGL products and services. This is the event staff. 
Uh, another uh, uh, event plan coming up is the uh, AGL All Member Meeting, uh, which is uh, will be in Berlin. This will be March 8th and 9th. This will be the first All Member Meeting in person since COVID. So please join us for that. Registration will be uh, on the website. And another event, this is new, uh, Linux Foundation created a new embedded uh, focused event for next year. It's called uh, Embedded Open Source Summit, or EOSS. Uh, so this will be in Prague at the end of June. AGL will be participating there. We will either have a co-located event or uh, a track within the EOSS. So please join us for that as well. And then finally, we have a lot of uh, workshops planned for the year uh, in Japan, in Germany, um, in Spain. Uh, so please visit our wiki and you'll see that we, these workshops are basically developer focused kind of hack fests. Um, so join us for those as well if you can. And I just want to close by saying, you know, during COVID, I did a virtual uh, presentation and I showed this chart. And um, I said AGL's future looks bright. Well, I can say that despite all the challenges that we had during COVID and the automotive industry had it during COVID, AGL's future is the brightest it's ever been. And we've added more code, we've added more members, and we've added more features than ever before. Uh, things are looking really, really bright for AGL. We will uh, unlike, uh, undoubtedly be uh, a market leader for ma uh, many years to come. So please get involved with AGL. We would like to see you out there. And with that, I want to thank you very much.